Hello everyone, this is Evan here from The Trade Risk on Saturday, February 4th with a weekend market recap video. We're going to cover the current market environment and some of the major markets. We're going to keep it a little bit shorter this week. I've been traveling for uh, the past few days, Thursday and Friday, haven't been able to post or update anything on the stream, but I wanted to do a quick five minute recap video while I have some downtime here. So let's uh, quickly jump into the S&P 500. We did finish higher on the week, uh, not by much. You can see 16 basis points to the upside. Side, and there was some volatility this week. Uh, so let's take a look at the daily chart and take a look at uh, where we started. And, and that was Monday here. And Monday is where we saw, you know, essentially the bulk of the downside move from this week. Uh, we were down north of 1% in the S&P 500 at the lows. The bulls did kind of step in there and rally us up. Uh, and we ended up finishing down 0.62% on Monday. Now, what was interesting about Monday, we had two things kind of happen there. We had one, um, we had this breakout last week, and you can see by this rectangle here, this three-day session, where we went sideways, we broke out above the six-week consolidation, uh, and then on Monday, with that gap lower, we saw sort of an island top get created, and, and more importantly, we saw um, a failure to uh, break out, uh, you know, a failure back into this old range. And that's that was a bit of a concern and gave us some indication that, um, you know, perhaps this would lead to a bigger uh, move lower, so a larger retracement, um, you know, with those failed moves, failed to break, in this case, failing to break out higher can sometimes lead to uh, fast moves in the opposite direction. Uh, the other interesting thing about Monday, though, is we saw um, a, a fast and sharp rush uh, to put on uh, hedges uh, via the VIX up almost 20% here intraday. It was actually up over 20% intraday on Monday. Uh, it didn't ultimately close up 20%, but goes to show you how um, you know how quick this market, just the just the general sentiment and and sort of um, you know the I guess you call it nervousness uh, to to hedge uh, in the event that people think we are going to continue to roll over. Uh, ultimately. We didn't. We saw some stabilization. We saw volatility for the rest of the week and some chopping around. Uh, but ultimately, Friday is where we put uh, basically completely reversed and, and recovered uh, the gap down from Monday. We're down 62 basis points on Monday. We're up 69 on Friday. So that ultimately did get us back towards the highs of the of, of the week. Um, so we are saved. The, the trend remains higher. Um, I think you have some good lines in the sand to use right below us. Uh, 228 really tactical uh, and really tight, but um, if, if you're a very active trader looking at markets day-to-day uh, -day and, and short-term movements, uh, 228 on the downside, I think that would be a bit of a line in the sand. And then you could also, a little bit uh, looser of a stop, or at least a point to take notice would be this trend line that is extending from uh, basically the December low or the, this December pivot right here all the way up to these recent uh, highs and the recent lows that we put in. So uh, that would come in right around 226, 227. So I think this general area, if we start to lose this, you know that that would be a point where you could take notice, uh, perhaps tighten up some more positions, uh, flip short if that's your style, uh, but. You know, at any rate, I think you have to at least still kind of stick with this trend. It is a little choppy in here. We certainly did get chopped out of a lot of our near-term positions, particularly on Monday, as we saw that move down. We had to respect that move down. Uh, and again, uh, as the market sort of held in there and started to move higher on Friday, put on a little bit of ex more exposure. So we're sticking with the long thesis. But um, you know, certainly not all in. Certainly not willing to to you know have um, you know margined out accounts right now to the long side. But I think it still is paying to be uh, long and participating in this market. IWM uh, continues to kind of move in this pattern here, hasn't really definitively changed anything or broken out. It's still kind of flagging out or at least moving lower in this channel. It's it's testing the up, up, upper end of it right now. Uh, I think to get some good momentum in here, you still need to get above 137.50. Otherwise, it's still more or less moving sideways. And then the Qs are back towards these recent highs, uh, 126, 125.75. That's going to be the old highs. That's going to be the level we want to see if the Qs 
can move above, take out, and continue to uh, lead this market higher. Uh, as far as some other markets go, TLT, uh, kind of in a messy range here, nothing new. We've talked about these lows down here from December, these highs up here from earlier this year. I think that's the playground right now for TLT. If we go to GLD, you can see it's back towards these recent highs, this 116 level, which we know has been uh, pretty influential in the past. We're getting back above there, so looks good. It, we're at a prior, uh, you know, this prior pivot high here from mid January. Let's see if we can continue to move above it. Silver, we wrote a post, put up a post this earlier this week about this kind of dual breakout. We got to move above 16 and a quarter and above this trend line here. So from a larger, longer term structural standpoint, silver looks to be finally uh, resolving back to the upside after being in about a six month or so decline, uh, stair stepping lower in this uh, downtrend. So silver looking pretty good here. Um, Paying attention to it, I don't know how actionable it is right now. Not sure. Uh, you know, I don't necessarily want to jump in this right here, but I want to see just how it acts and and how it um, moves over the past couple of days and weeks, and perhaps uh, you know if we can again continue to start to trend back to the upside. Something I want to look to get involved in. USO still doing the same thing it's been doing, uh, getting pretty tight in here. I still like it. Uh, or at least I like the opportunity that it's that it's giving us right now uh, to potentially get a trend uh, in the near term. So I'm paying attention to it. I like it to the long side. If it can get a little more strength, want to really start to see it close above 1160, 1165, and then that could be interesting there in USO. UNG is pretty much just hands off. Uh, very weak again this this week, down 10%. So really getting uh, hit hard here in 2017. Continues to look sloppy and uh, just looks like there's, you know, much better opportunities out there and places to pay attention to uh, than UNG at the moment. So we're going to end it there, keep things pretty quick uh, and uh, concise this week. But I uh, hope you guys had a great week trading and hope to be back uh, active next week with um, publishing some ideas and new videos. So thanks for watching and talk to you soon.